bought it games studio yeah um yeah so that would be your second studio that you will be yeah like you have you are making right now right yeah i started you know exploding exploding barrel games was the first one that was in the ground floor and yeah that's the second one uh the second one the first time around i i came for the ride with some other people uh this time i'm trying to you know start start the company myself which is as you can imagine is not not easy you have to like make the game and also take care of all the other stuff um yeah legal business and everything i guess you'll have yeah. to be like top of everything yeah I'm, I'm, t I'm not so i had to learn a few things i'm not you know being an artist as you can imagine i'm not great at it but you know my brother is helping me and he's is much better at this uh so we'll, we'll, yeah we'll, we'll get there we'll get there okay perfect so i i saw a lot of art so art that you are sharing on twitter every day so of course i'm as you might know i'm from the art background as well i've been working on games and stuff like that mostly casual art, indie games i worked on so yeah uh what are you aiming for in kinship like for art style, something like MCOC, MROC, Fortnite. Those are the art styles that are like my favorite right now. But yeah, what are you aiming for? Uh, I saw your work actually, the pretty awesome stuff. Um, oh, so thanks. yeah, so um, no, it, it, like, for I think every project I work on, I try to approach it in a different way as much as possible um of course i have my own style when i do my own art um and i'm heavily influenced by comics and animation and all kinds of different things i one thing i never want to do even though i respect people that do it is like full realism uh is not something that i'm 100 percent interested in i always like more stylized stuff when we start doing contest, we played around the different styles from like a more Pixar like, you know, more exaggerated to a bit more realistic. But we ended up, you know, hitting the middle, which which I like. Uh, there's some realism in the materials uh, and some of the details and mostly in the environment, but for the characters, we purposely exaggerated some of the traits. I know the, the big characters are bigger. Thor's hammer is bigger than it is in the movies. Uh, the colors are more punchy. Let, you know, the, the characters have their own light rig. So they're not a hundred percent influenced by the colors of of the environment. Uh, if you do hundred percent realistic. You know, looking at, at your picture right now, you're getting you're influenced by this this white light, and I'm influenced by all the colors of the environment. We purposely remove that. We add, keep a, a couple of lights that we influence a little bit on the color. So if you're in a desert environment, it'll be a little bo bit more tan, and if you're at night in interior, it'll be a little mo more blue, but not enough to completely change the colors of the 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 characters costumes because in in comics that's that's what you do like you go, try to keep the m as much as possible the colors the punchy colors of the costumes so even if you play in a tiny screen you look at iron man and feels like iron man's colors the ferrari red you know the, the egg yellow or whatever uh so we that was on purpose we tried to like make it look feel like a comic book plus a lot of cool things that only 3d can do you know a lot more of the details you know the animation and stuff like that so and for m rock it was kind of the same thing we wanted to keep our house style for contest that people recognize that they will feel from the same universe but because it was a few years later we wanted to add more technology so we wanted we added a pbr uh light kind of uh, system but without going full pbr you know like physics based now we we had a lot of back and forth between the the engineers 
to like find a, a, a way to create those characters that the artists we still have a lot of power into ignoring reality if they wanted to uh because if you're thinking fully physics and you you having a game that is 3v3 and you're looking down uh a lot of the characters will be lost in the in the action right so the artists and the engineers had a lot of talks about like no 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 this we need to remove if we want to have a sky that is green but we don't want the characters to to feel washed in green uh we need to be able to do that and turn it off so the characters will have still the punchy colors that we want but if you compare for example a hulk from contest and a hulk from ramrock even though in people's minds they're very similar they're not like you look at them Emrock is way more realistic even though it feels like the same style so we love the how the, the characters in that game turn out turn out because uh it looks really great for and then for hand shift i really wanted to go full on on the comic book uh concept art comic book animation if you watch across the spider verse and you you see the amount of different techniques that they use and it works it works for the storytelling it feels really amazing we want to be able to step out of reality a little bit more even and and have environments that feel painted uh the characters they might be done in 3d but they they are pre-rendered and then they we messed with the with the style of the characters to look to make them look really flat so it's almost like uh, anime mixed with concept art mixed with marvel comics <laughs> we're still working on the the, the style and the, developing it but that's the area we want to play right now it's more illustrative uh and because of the camera is fixed we can paint a lot of the things of the vistas um yeah yeah it's been fun too like that's the area of pre-production that i love to try and push push how far we can go uh yes and i saw the like uh, that monster truck god screenshot yesterday and it looked amazing so yeah so uh, like uh the characters will be in isometric from top view right most of the characters like boss yeah is in... uh, yeah it's isometric because again the game the type of game we're making forms what we do um so we're playing right now let, let's say you know the world is made in a way that there'll be areas they'll be more conducive to to exploration and others will be more for battling or doing other things so let's say you walk into a market there'll be an open area uh and there'll be an area that enemies will meet you so and then the camera will go in so you have you you feel more into the in the action uh all the areas will pull out so you can see a beautiful vista or something and there'll be a lot of places that you can look oh maybe i can go there maybe i can can go there so be more a strategy uh we want the camera to to go after what the what the the moment of the game is um again going back to m rock we had a lot of conflict between the visuals and the storytelling and also the gameplay because for for that game gameplay bag that the camera will be really far because you need to see at all times where all the all the other players are so you can strategize but that detracts from from actually seeing the characters doing cool superhero things you know the animations and and the details we put in the characters so as an artist we are trying to pull the camera in so pull out pull in it was it was hard but for this game because a little more um the the progression and the storytelling is a bit more linear you go through a story so we can tailor moments where yeah the camera can change and to focus on what you need to see right now if you need to see something really big like a big monster or a big statue or a mountain or something doesn't make sense that you to be just seeing the, the bottom of the mountain right you need to see the whole thing to contextualize so we're doing that we're, we're having the camera uh 
be a little bit of a slave of the of the storytelling and the gameplay uh of course because we want to paint a lot of things we don't want the camera to be doing like three sixes and stuff but before the isometric the, the isometric nature of the game uh it works really well a lot of games you know like diablo or hades or they do isometric and it looks really nice because you can see the world and and the, the developers can really tailor the world for what you want to what you want the players to see at that moment so yeah that works really well for us yes the, like that yeah yeah we we like we like the whole boss thing like there's a game called uh death's door that we played a lot that does it really well you know it's a lot of exploration and then we go into a room and the, you see this gigantic monster that it's shaped like a cathedral or whatever we love that um so we want to have monster encounters not necessarily every boss encounter means you have to fight uh you're gonna meet a lot of creatures um that maybe is not a fighting moment maybe it's something else maybe you need to negotiate or maybe you need to climb the monster or whatever it is um but we love those big creatures we love big big uh cinematic moments that we we want to explore that that guy's uh -huh. yeah or maybe like boss guiding you to fight other boss first and then say yeah. i'll see you next time or something yeah it, right, that, right. we saw a good. game called uh, uh wonder the wandering village where like you the is a kind of village building game uh but the whole village is is a gigantic dinosaur that you build on top of so you walk around with the village uh you know or, or or very old games like golden axe you know that you jump on top of a gigantic ego and you're fighting on the top of the of the ego you're not actually fighting the ego but so we love that that kind of fantasy yeah cool so what are the like game genres that you enjoy the most like uh, we all know mcock is like card collection plus arcade fighting game and amrock was completely something different that i cannot put in any genre i don't think and uh, yeah amrock i can't put in any genre but yeah mco card collection and then this fighting game so what are the genres that you actually enjoy or you want to create more of um i do love games that are wow well, I, lo I love so many games it's kind of it's kind of weird because i grew up loving games like civilization you know the turn base kind of building stuff uh i love that game even to this day like i i played it a lot or games like uh, heroes of might and magic that has a little bit of a blend between exploration in the map and then you go into a city you you collect uh creatures build the army and then you go fight and when you go fight is that like a chessboard um but i do love action games that like nowadays i i prefer games that are a bit snappier of course marvel snap is a game that i've been playing a lot <laughs> uh, so i can play short burst sessions and and you know if i want to play for five minutes i'll still be happy but i can play for hours and you know there'll be experience for me so i've never been good at fighting games even though i i played fighting games i built a fighting game for like you know i think contest is is very special in that sense because it's not really a fighting game that you need a lot of skill to get into you need a lot of skill to become good but you can pick it up rpg elements as well yeah yeah so you can pick it up in five minutes and actually have fun yeah because the the timing and is like a dance right traditional mm -hmm. fighting games like if you take street fighter six or whatever it it, it is is uh, very intimidating uh for people that don't play because there's buttons and different ways to do combos and stuff like that um so i never been very good I, I admire those kind of games but i love games that you can follow and explore nowadays like i've been playing a lot of zelda and the exploration side of that game is amazing of course it's a game that took seven years to make and the gigantic team but we want that kind of spirit we want we want people to feel like our game is also a place you want to go and i want to come back to and see what's next what can i do to to discover things the sense of discovery 
is something that I'm looking for in every game that I do. And it, the games that surprise me, you know what I mean? Even in 10 minutes into the game, you feel drawn in. And the game doesn't need to have like a 15 minute cutscene to to make you feel that you want to see more. Uh, games that have mystery. And um, so I don't know if that answered your question about genre, but that's sort of the kind of things I usually look into games, whatever they are, you know, that draw me in through story, through, through world building and stuff like that. Yeah. So at, at any point, I'm going to like back in probably 2012, 13, it was in development probably. So yeah, any time was it not fighting game and something else? No, no, was that? Sorry, I missed the last part. So I mean, so when it was in development, it was always in like a like as a fighting game. It was designed as a fighting game, or it was basically at something different at start. And uh, you know, contest was always a fighting game because um, we had to play in that area. You know, the contract that we had with Marvel told us we had to build a fighting game. <clears throat> because it was an area that they didn't have a game. So they usually parse different genres to different studios. And we pitched the fighting game because there was one area that they didn't have. Uh, so it was always a fighting game. But the way we built it, it was very different from the fighting games at the time. Uh, or they, mostly they were ports or of console fighting games. So we decided to, to build our kind of fighting game. For MROC, MROC when through different kind of phases. Uh, for me, MROC, when I pitched it, I was not imagining the the game that I went up making uh, for good or bad. You know, the, the, I was imagining more, something a bit more about territory control and conquering the world and exploring and stuff like that. And there'll be a, a conflict resolution moment. So whatever that is, you go explore, find a new territory, and you have to conquer the territory. You bring your your crew, your army, and then there'll be some kind of fight because we know superheroes need to fight. Um, even that, I kind of challenged at the time. It's like, why do they need to fight? Maybe they need to, they can do something else. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I didn't think much about like what will be the, the definition of the conflict resolution uh when i pitched it but it was it, it would be f the camera that of the first concept that i did it was over the shoulder uh and you were much closer to your characters and facing characters coming this way uh so i imagine a little bit more of a third person battler than a, a mobile like you know in an arena or something like that but then you know it wasn't my job to develop that people in the design team look at the pitch and say hey this is going to work best in this kind of area and then, you know the, the i i end up loving the gameplay the way it was was done uh i don't like mobiles because they're very slow and a play session takes 20 minutes you know what i mean and we always wanted to have a game that was much snappier because that's the kabam way right that's like fast quick and super hero like and, and marvel loves that too so the idea of having short kind of three minute one to three minute battles uh started developing very slowly but the game changed quite a bit like from what it was in the beginning not contest contest was supposed to be a fighting game from the beginning okay so the barons from the amro there were like a lot of unique leaders of those houses like pirate pool the logan uh that samurai logan or and yeah uh, dr strange yeah the indian dr strange he spoke back in like 2019 20 something so yeah so those barons are there or were there any plans to release those barons in mcoc as a playable characters that's a discussion we always had in our brainstorms um if like there was always those characters they, they look amazing like all of them and they're kind of built yeah. of course to bring them into contest you need to do some work but uh yeah and everybody, everybody loves them but it, everybody loves them in in as a as characters 
and as part of the universe but there's also other considerations that people say oh people are gonna co get confused uh what is that character blah, blah blah so there's a lot of discussions and we end up not using those characters as much as we wanted to um which is a pity but they are ready to to come in you know they're, they're part of the fiction we finish the m rock story and send them all into better better realm so yeah i think there's always a chance but there's so many characters competing for attention now every time you know the the, the few the last few uh brainstorms that i was present uh there's always like a list of so many characters that want to get in uh there's characters from oh the new disney plus show uh, or the new marvel movie uh the new comics uh each one's favorites you know like oh i like this and then there's always like oh we don't have enough female characters let's think about our female characters you know you know inclusivity and there's a lot of check marks that each character now has to go through before in the beginning the first couple of th maybe the first three years was it was like let's make this map of cool characters and there was a few of us deciding uh and then we made we made it work uh but now there's a lot of things that need to be decided to make sure that a character the list changed like so many times uh for our entire year people just go oh no i have to remove this oh no oh this thing moved so x-men move this way and so yeah it's for m rock character to have a chance it has to fight <laughs> with a lot of other other potential candidates so yeah i guess a small chance as always i don't know if there's some people that would like to forget that m rock ever existed and you know what i mean but i i surely would love to to have those characters in there and tell tell some stories about those characters too which would be really really cool and Thank i know so I, i've been yeah, yeah huh? i've been like tweeting on uh, like non-stop to get those pirate pool and logan and all the barons from them because the visuals of those characters looked amazing those like that spider-man had in the first trailer like, those like characters look so awesome and we didn't get those in mcoc so i was so disappointed back then and even environments you know, yeah like, i know i know some a lot of, a lot of the designers a lot of the designers there love the the m rock characters and they they will probably want to put them in if they have a chance so you know hopefully <laughs> yes hoping hoping for best and hope that we get those characters as just like card collection or something like anyway yeah right yeah so i kinship so back to kinship will that game be in like one one off or like part of huge universe or like there will be a lot of character releasing like mcoc or M M Rock. so like the train will continue the ca character releasing every month or update or like like it's just one of three time zones three family members games like story ends game is finished we are moving to the new game will that be like that we yeah we we, we don't want to like because releasing a character every month is a is a byproduct of what free to play needs to do you know if we had a if we didn't have to release a character every month in contest you'd be way better but because you have more time to work on it and really make every character special uh but because it's free to play you need to release new content in a much more accelerated cadence uh we we don't have that pressure making a non free to play game so whatever makes sense for the game we'll do uh there'll be more characters in the game not only the three the three are the main one uh but we're not sure if we're gonna do be doing character releases uh like that if it doesn't make sense for the story uh we're probably gonna add chapters which is more like what we want to do for this game the game is going to start in a central area of this world which we want it to be really huge uh and you're going to be playing most of the main adventures in that which is a city and then the more we expand the world then you the gates will be open for you to 
to play new chapters. That's more like what we want to do. And each one of those chapters, we have different companions, different people you meet, uh, different bosses, different story, different items. There's a lot of stuff that we want uh, to do about material culture that you find things and you use those things and you 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 combine them into different things and you build things to help you in this 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 journey and also uh, like weapons and and armor and all kinds of different things that you can do like different skins i think they'll they'll fit better what the game is uh, but you know it, we're still in the beginning so we might have other ideas that would, would change that and make it even better so uh we're open to to changing things if they they make more sense in the in the development okay so it it will release on both console and mobile or just uh, console pc we want to do a cadence of pc definitely is the first first part because pc first is easier cheaper more widespread uh so people can download it doesn't matter if like you know, it, your it's more open for for in terms of hardware, uh, and then mobile is a close second. So we want to have PC, then mobile, then if we and uh, have enough support and players, we'll, we'll port to to console, hopefully. So there is an order to it. Okay, and uh, I think that entire game is being built on Unreal Engine or Unity three. That's an interesting question. <laughs> we we started playing with Unreal uh, a little bit, and we like Unreal for a lot of reasons, and but we hate Unreal for other reasons. Uh, visually, yes, Unreal has so much potential, um, but there's a lot of things that Unreal is more expensive and harder to develop. And since we've been working with Unity for a long time. Uh, it felt more natural that at this prototype phase we'll, we'll, we'll work on Unity, uh, but we're not very married to any kind of uh, specific engine right now. Our game will be visually easy to to develop in in different yeah. in different um, engines, but Unity is serving as well right now. So if we change it and we decide that Unity is causing us trouble, we will probably uh jumped another one we even talk about godot or whatever we we want to do whatever is best for the game uh and we also have you know alex or our main engineer he's he's actually building his own engine so uh we don't even like need unity for most of the stuff we're doing right now because it's a 2d uh rendered world uh he's building a very cool engine where you can Oh yeah, if I want to make this part of the scene, the entire entire illustration, we can import to that and then effects and then all the layers. But then if you want to do a part that is just a corridor and you just need to repeat textures or whatever, it's very easy for an artist to build things with, with the blocks. Um we might end up using using that, you know, using our own engine and to fit exactly what we want to do. Uh so yeah, but Unity is being good for the prototyping because everybody knows how to use it, even me, and I'm an idiot. <laughs> and, but I had to use Unit like a lot of times in contests because sometimes there was nobody to do a specific job. So I had to learn a lot of things around Unit Unity to spare the team's time, you know, doing cutscenes, doing all different things. So I had to learn quite a bit. And I want to be able to get my hands dirty and not just be a guy that says, look, oh, I'm the creative director, you know, do that, do that. You know, like there's no such a thing as as that in a in an indie kind of development. Everybody has to know a lot of different jobs. So yeah. Yeah, that's cool that you also work on the indie. So yeah, um on character release cadence for MCOC, like how much input you had and uh, like Marvel had. Well, I have quite a bit actually, but you know, I try to keep my my job uh, related to to the idea. You know, the first hundred and I don't know how many, almost like the first 150 characters, 
it was all my concept, right? So I, I drew all of that. So visually, I was defining what was the version of the character that I wanted. And, but I kept the, the concept very simple, not a lot of shading, a lot of extra, you know, to make it look pretty or whatever. I kept it as, as a drawing. So, because I believe that every step of the way, every artist takes it to a next level, right? Contributes to something. When you decide too much about every single detail or how they look, yeah, some, some 3D artists love that, but for our team, they're like visual artists. They love, they, they love being able to have freedom to keep pushing it. So I gave them just enough information to start modeling, and then they made it better every time. Um, but during the, the brainstorms, that was another area that I cared about being there. And every time I had the brainstorms, we said like designers, producer, uh, artists, effects artists, animators. And then I would do the kickoff and say, hey, this character is about this. This is like three things that this character absolutely needs to have, you know, in terms of personality, in terms of powers, the way it moves, uh, look at that kind of reference. Um, and some characters will be pretty easy. Like if you make Spider-Man, there's like a wealth of Spider-Man to look at in visual medium. But for characters that are very, um, you know, that nobody has done before, maybe that appeared in the comics a couple of times, you don't know how the character moves, you don't know, how, you know, a certain attitude or powers. Sometimes you have to sort through powers, like Apocalypse. Apocalypse has every power, right? Depending on what kind of story they're telling in the comics, he will have. So what, what power would be important for Apocalypse? So we have to, like, I'll, I'll try to guide and say, hey, this is the kind of thing that Apocalypse should be doing. Let's ignore all the other stuff for this because it's going to be uh, really crazy. And then the designers will go and, hey, I want to this character to be a defender or to be a certain kind of counter to this kind of character. So we combine those ideas into something that made sense for the game and also for fans of the character, they'll look at the character and say, hey, that's the character, you know what I mean? And we're proud to say that a lot of the characters we did became almost like reference to other medium. Oh, this character like feels like the character, you know? So let's do it like that. So, and then I'll just put it hands off, right? I'll just go to a couple of more of the, the brainstorms just to show like when people are animating, so I'll direct the animation a little bit and say, hey, now this is looking like this and it's not working. And then the designers will be more worried about, you know, oh, this is this is gonna be like dexable or non-dexable, or you know, that's feeling I'm playing it and it doesn't feel right. So the combination between the technical parts and the creative parts always work really seamlessly. And then after that, you know, those guys were off to the races and they made the characters as great as they can be, and I wouldn't be too intrusive about it so it's more about the idea and how it feels right um and then eventually we got concept artists there so i stopped concepting every character and they took it and it's like just concepting the ones that i really cared about like the original characters or a specific character here and there because i was doing so many other things too and it became harder and harder for me to draw which is i love drawing and <laughs> It pains me that I, I didn't do it that much. Um, so yeah, it was it became like an oiled machine, but I was always trying to be there in the moments or things are defined so we don't get too far because I was kind of the ambassador for Marvel too. Uh, if I did so, if the character didn't feel like the character, they would call me, you know. Uh, <laughs> so I had to like keep the idea they they'll be informed oh that's the direction we want to, with the character and if we had some really crazy idea that it was a bit off like out, out of there i had to explain why why are we doing that oh maybe it's for gameplay purposes uh but there's we always need a fictional reason and a creative reason for that to to work uh, like professor x is a great example we always like struggled he's such a popular character but terrible character for fighting games right so yeah uh, we don't want him in the chair like uh 
so how can we make a character that's purely psychic work well? So I came up with the idea that everything uh, will, will be every time you fight Professor X, you're actually fighting in his mind. Yeah, that's why there's an effect that goes around the screen. You're actually not fighting the real world. You're fighting against him in his own psychic construct. And that kind of freed everybody to do whatever. Now he can actually have all the powers of the X-Men, you know, wings like Angel and Cyclops and whatever, without having to to not have that character, which is people would love to have in the game. So stuff like that. Yeah, Professor X design was like incredible, and uh, even Apocalypse. Yeah, back then it was amazing. Even Warlock, Warlock took me by like huge surprise. I never heard of him. I was not like a like as you can imagine in India. We like we didn't have that many comics to read back in those days. And like when I saw Warlock, I was like completely surprised and taken aback. Like this is amazing. How huh? who who did this? Like who imagined this and stuff like that. So I started searching and there were not many graphics about Warlock. So, no, yeah, I can now imagine what you must have gone through and like what you had in mind to create the Warlock basically, like shape shifting, there is machine, the, those are like circuits on his body, wires. Yeah, and yeah, it was amazing. Thanks. So, yeah, more also, love is from my childhood. Yeah, the New Mutants, I used to read that comic and I loved it when I was a kid. And when it was time to do another X event, uh, we we wanted to do New Mutants. And for us, you know, I wanted to do the Brazilian character, of course, uh, Sunspot. And Warlock was always a character that really was really interesting in the comics because he could do a lot of different things. And it was it looked very weird. But he's also not a, not a mutant. So that gave, that gives a chance to for people to play with the with the class right as well yeah so like because of warlock and ch characters like Aegon, i was always wondering did you ever had conversation with marvel that we would love to make animated marvel contest of champion waves web series for disney plus or something like that yeah i did i did a few times <laughs> but you know like it's Mar marvel games and marvel tv there are two different groups, right? So for us to suggest that Disney Plus would do a series of Marvel contests, we have to go to Marvel Games. Marvel Games had to go to Marvel TV. And the times that I suggested that, they'll say, yeah, that'll be pretty hard. Those guys are pretty close in their own kind of, you know, same with movies, right? You can never, they suggest things to games. They, you know, they, it, they it's weird. Game, games are now changing that the the packing order of of entertainment. Now games are like here for the new generations, and movies are kind of eh, like here, uh, yeah. and they make a lot of money. So uh, I, I bet you start seeing more and more uh, of movies inspired by games. But Marvel is kind of weird situation because the comics inspired the movies the movies inspired the games uh and now the games will start inspiring the comics so if you make a movie can you make a movie about a version of the comics i don't know of the games i don't know uh for original characters maybe uh you have a gone the movie or guillotine the movie uh that would be amazing to see but we, yeah we pitched a few times like oh let's do something and they say you can make a web series, they say, you know what I mean? Uh, they say a web series is a different thing. You, you'll be posting in your own channels, and we also oh. will also be posting in Marvel Entertainment or whatever. But w you kind of frame it like you're promoting the game, you know what I mean? Other games did that. Oh. Like, yeah, <laughs> so it's almost like the motion comics, but be better. Um, so that we could do, but you know, Akabam, we're already so busy with with the game, and people like me that are interested in transmedia stuff uh, would not have the the budget to to produce something that, like that, which is a full time job. Yes. <laughs> so we have to probably partner with somebody, um, 
and pay for the production and you know it's a lot of voiceovers and everything yeah 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 it's a so lot of course, effort for like releasing Aegon, then you would need someone like someone like Aegon to voice him uh, yeah like i can imagine the voice he has but yeah finding that voice would be very difficult we actually never have voice for Aegon. yeah that's true uh we, in his own motion comics it doesn't say anything yeah yeah uh, in my mind i have his voice but i don't know how he would sound actually on screen like even guillotine yeah she would have like that french accent and stuff like that but yeah uh, that's why i just want to see this like season with the contest of champion that has Aegon, thing guillotine and like og some like maybe the gamora right. characters like that that who would shine on uh, like that media animated media contest and warlock of course is, yeah contest of champions is perfect for us for a show you know yeah. and every episode we have a different fight a different part of the contest and it is very animatable for for a for a tv show yeah. So. You know, I remember Amazing Spider-Man doing two episodes for the Contest of Champions back in, I think, 2014 or 15, I, yeah, yeah, maybe 14. I yeah, I, and back then, yeah, th that was like time I was like just picking up the game and thinking I was mainly into Injustice back then. So I was not a Marvel guy. Yeah. And COC basically made me the Marvel guy because Injustice <laughs> was failing at what I was expecting from a game so it it was stale actually they didn't update it and stuff like that so anyway mcoc made me the marvel guy and that's when i was like watching that spider-man 2 episode and i was wondering wow it's like we could yeah. have that series based on this thing like battle ram and uh, unique characters fighting like some guest appearances from time to time from wolverine or uh, Iron Man and Captain America stuff like that. Yeah, this. it's gas, right? You can make them come in and come out. Like we don't need to have all the characters all the time. It's it's funny because that show I remember when they announced it, and it, and I'm like, oh, they make a contest of champions, and I thought like you know animation takes a long time to make, so they probably planned that be even before the game was out, uh, okay. because it's a famous comic too. But when it came out. I saw them trying to promote it to like attach to the game in a way. And because they made a, a comic based on that, on the episode of the TV show. And then they put our logo in the comic at the time it was still the old logo. And we, we knew nothing about it. They just took it and put it in the comic and said, the contest of champions starts now. And it, I think they're trying to, you know, get, get into the, our success a little bit and but you know i always said like come on guys just talk to us we'll give you all the cool stuff we'll give you the all the assets yeah. we can do something together but unfortunately there was always being that maybe with disney now it changes a little bit that disconnect between what the publishing side is doing or t tv movies games they all like in their little buckets there is conversations but sometimes we'll, we'll be surprised like oh so they're doing that it would be perfect if we did a uh, event based on that if we knew it but now it's too late right so there was a lot of situations like that that i was i was trying to connect and say hey t tell those guys we want to do something with them but you know everybody's doing their own thing but hopefully now there'll be more synergy uh between the, the parts and then we can do events and because everybody wins, right? Everybody gets awareness about the characters and the events and everything. So yeah, and, and who knows? Even like in shape picks up like and goes off like my MCOC does, and we get the web series or movie on Kinship in future. Maybe will that be possible? Yeah, I'm definitely not gonna pass that. Uh, yeah, of course, contest is a one in a lifetime thing. You know, is a lightning in the bottle. You know, it's <laughs> very hard to repeat that success uh but yeah we'll do our best to to make a game that that we want a lot of people to play that's that's the one thing uh and we want to expand into basically a lot of game adaptions are being very successful right now so i yeah. think kinship does have a chance like if like story is great and the visuals are amazing 
a lot of people are being inspired from that so yeah maybe that will have that movie or series on kinship maybe maybe Ho hope you're right <laughs> yeah and i hope you you will have that chance that you didn't get with mcoc that you get on kinship and make yeah. that whole universe movie Series, web series and like basically Star Wars of its yeah. own universe. It's yeah. being easier than ever, right? You just you can make your own. If you have the right people and time, you can do like you on YouTube and you can do a lot of things that people love without having to have like millions of dollars to develop. So, so it's the right time for sure. Yeah, definitely. People are making now like short films of 15, 20 minutes on Unreal, sitting at their home, like, with, yeah. like movie cinematics quality so yeah it's definitely possible now yeah for sure yeah okay and so my last question so uh, i remember you talked about x-men game with uh reach i think on rich's podcast yes uh, yes okay. yeah. so like uh that idea sounded so incredible to me why didn't it got picked up like x-men had so many characters like it you can basically create your own MCOC with the X Men characters only. It yeah. Is that like a Marvel? Well, well, you know, it's part of a few Marvel games that I have in my back pocket. <laughs> it's, not, it's not only that one. I do have about six that we developed a little bit. And I have it in, in, I have a folder full of ideas that I never use for contests. And I took a few of them and said, if I made a game about the X Men, what would be the game and so i wrote about it and i do a little concept i do that a lot and you know may maybe one day <laughs> maybe one day i know i know i would love to work with my marvel friends again and i know they would love to work with me you know we'll work really well together so if the opportunity comes yeah yeah i would love to do something like that the x-men game you it's called x-men but like you don't you like the only character that you see from the the X Men, most of the game is Wolverine, um, mm -hmm. because it's it's based it's based on a, a few of the students, uh, and then they're like the weirdest of the students. The students they have the weirdest powers, or they like they're too ugly, and people don't want to be with them. You know the outcasts. You know in every school you have them, uh, the freaks and geeks kind of thing, and they they are forced to defend the mansion by themselves over the christmas break so they they are left behind because they're the ones that don't have parents that the parents don't don't want them don't want to see them so and they are like they're young they don't know how to control their powers or their powers sometimes are kind of useless so wolverine draws the short stick and he's He's the one that needs to stay behind to to take care of them over Christmas because they don't have anywhere else to go. But then something happens to him, and there's there's they have to save Wolverine, uh, and they have to learn to use their powers in the in the process. So it's all in the mansion. They can't get out. It's, it's a whole uh, different kind of gameplay too. Uh, but that's the idea. It's called. It was called X Men Orphans of the Atom. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, it's one of the few ideas I have. And maybe, maybe one day we'll make it. Uh, the other ones that are pretty crazy too. <laughs> they all focus on one character or, or a few characters that haven't been used properly in games yet. And I said, oh, this character deserves better. You know what I mean? Um, so I will be. I discussed with a few friends and like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like, so, you know, it's in my back pocket for one day to make it. So is there any like weirdest game in your back pocket for the Marvel that you had imagined? No, there, there is a couple of very weird ones <laughs> with characters that I already said, you know, even publicly that I love those characters, but I, I don't see anybody using them properly even contests or even or maybe contest didn't use them you know what i mean so like d-list characters or 
But then I found a little, oh, okay, this will be a, the perfect gameplay for this, for this one character. So created like a, a short kind of experience uh, for specific for the character, like an adventure that you have to go through and play. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it as a mystery or not right now, but one day, one day I'll make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be looking forward to that, those games and those characters as well. Yep. So yeah, good luck for the kinship. Then I'll be hoping that it gets released soon, or maybe 24, 2024 would be your target, or twenty five. Well, we're shooting for twenty five, but you know it could be depend on the size of the game and depending how the the Kickstarter goes. Uh, if we only get the, the basic amount for Kickstarter, the game would be a certain size. But if we get more, we want to put more experiences around, more modes. So that might make the game a bit bigger. Uh, it depends on that. I cannot, like, we're very early right now doing prototype and, and pre-production. Pre uh, so my focus now is to keep the team working, keep the team together. Uh, because the people I got, like, they are from ex kabamers and people that are really respect working at Kabam. So I want to keep this specific formula, this specific team working together. Uh, and once we have the, the result of the Kickstarter, we'll know exactly how what the shape of the development, how long it's going to take, the size of the team, if we can bring more people. Uh, so yeah, I think two years is a, is a kind of like a, a good educated guess, but you know, it might be less or you know we don't want it to be more i think two years is a good size max um okay. um so yeah but it's very early to tell <laughs> yeah um, yeah one more thing i wanted to ask so what if game studios will be making more games side by side with kinship or the kinship will be the one and only for at the moment no we have we have plans to like stagger the team so once we're like a year in into Kinshift, I have plans to bring more people in to add like a second creative unit, maybe two or three people to be working on what's next. And what's next could be either we want to expand the universe of Kinshift and make another game, or we want to make uh, a game about something else that is also in the same universe, which is something that we want to do. Um, but it all depends, you know, sometimes you need all hands on deck and you cannot be concentrating on something else. Uh, so King Chef is our hundred percent focus right now, but we'll see how the, the company develops because I, there's a lot of cool developers and talented people out there that I want to bring to, to our team and start sp spooling something different. Um, yeah, ideas. We do have a lot of ideas. That's one thing that we're not short of. So maybe we need more people to develop all of that. Yeah, and I hope even like what if Game Studios makes Marvel games as well. Those games that in your back pocket and the X Men game that you have. That, uh, that, that depends on how. No? <laughs> yeah, if, if like if if in the future we say, hey, you know, we can talk to Marvel and and if they want to do it, we'll do it. Of course. Because Marvel is one of those companies that gave me the, the the best time of my life, you know, in terms of creative. Because you have all that Marvel structure and the cool characters and all of that, but they gave me a lot of freedom to to follow my my instincts and and do something different with contests and with realm. Uh, so I'll, of course, I'd love to work with them again uh, in a heartbeat. Uh, and if I work with somebody else, you know, I I, I said in the past, like all the all the companies, all the licensors, there's a few that I would love to work with, but I'm not sure if the experience would be exactly like working with Marvel because it, it kind of spoiled me, spoiled me a little bit. Uh, there there is companies like that I would love to work on. Like I don't know, I I said in the past that I would love to make a Simpsons game, for example, because I love the Simpsons, but. I don't know if they'll they'll give me that kind of freedom to 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 you know spin things and change things and you know uh, then maybe they shouldn't but <laughs> that that wouldn't be the kind of project that I would be happy working with 
because that's the kind of thing I do. I try to change things and push things into different directions. So me and Marvel worked really well. Maybe there's other companies there that will give me the, this kind of freedom, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know, I talked about doing, you know, wanting to do a Thundercats game. Uh, but I'm not sure if they would let me because the idea that I have for Thundercats is a bit, uh, <laughs> it's a bit out there. Um, that's why comics are so cool sometimes because comics will, will let people kind of play in their universe a little bit more and, and then when the comics over, it is over, right? Uh, go back to the mainstream, but. Yeah, it's with Marvel, like, you know already what to expect. So the yeah. transition would be much like smoother for you, like making different stories and games. I, I'll even hope for console game from the What If Game Studios than from oh, yeah, Marvel. Yeah. Like, yeah, lately Marvel has been on fire with those console games. GOTG, I think Spider-Man 2, Wolverine. Okay. So. The Guardians one was amazing. Uh, so, and there's a few more that they announced that I, I'm looking forward to. It. Um, the EA one, you know. The, so, yeah. we'll see what they do. Uh, I, I trust those guys a lot. And if we work again, I know we're going to do something really cool and have a lot of fun. And they also know what I'm about, right? They wouldn't invite me to do anything if it wasn't something that they already know I can do well. So. Is a kind of a good match. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so no worries. I'll let you enjoy your day. I'll be sleeping off now. So, yeah. <laughs> what time is I it? Really so it's uh, twelve thirty a.m. Wow. Thanks for staying yeah. so late. <laughs> yeah, I I was like looking forward to it for last two three days. It's, I, I, ever since I got back to home from the hospital, basically. So yeah, I, I was really looking forward to this because like you basically inspired me to be on 3D artist, to be become 3D artist back in 2014. So, uh, you know, I exactly remember the even character that made me want to get into character designing because I was mainly into video editing and like, um, some development stuff like AR, VR was starting back then. So yeah, I was into that. But yeah, o OG Hulk, when like it released, it uh, he had like poster like and the Red Hulk. Those two had some poster and something like that, and that basically made me yes, this is something I want to make. And yeah. I still am not able to make it. So yeah, I'm still. That's just good. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking at your stuff right now. I have like this. Like you're doing really, really well uh do you what do you work you do you, do you are you doing some stuff for 3d stuff now or just just uh as a hobby uh, no right yeah just freelancing at the moment so not much like uh like job wise work on 3d so just hobby and freelance yeah that, that's looking really really good yeah <laughs> keep keep at it man i think you have you have talent um uh, yeah it's uh and our team, our team at Contest was, you know, the whole that you talked about it was, I think it was Gene that modeled that. Yeah, all oh, the team at Kabam was like, oh my God, those guys are like a different level. So, you know, and, and it was, it was really hard for us to even like hire more people because the level is so high that we couldn't, people would just apply and I was like, yeah, it's not quite there. And, and, but then you see the same person a couple of years later and you see already how much they they improved um so yeah you know if you keep practicing every day you just like the, the, you know go so fast and you become so good not like me i stopped drawing i'm getting worse every day so i now i'm <laughs> now i'm starting king shift again i'm picking it up again to like do concepts every day and stuff like that and starting to get a bit sharper again I think you'll be like making the decisions and drawing stuff for kinship by yourself. So I think you'll be back in like crew very soon if you are like working on it every day. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I want to do. I, I you know, that's why I left the band because I, I don't want to be in meetings. I don't want to be like that kind of guy that, you know, our directors need to do art. <laughs> uh, otherwise, they'll lose it, right? It's a muscle. 
so coming yeah. back to the indie part is is doing good to my to my skills for sure um, but i'm not sleeping <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would be like uh, so you you can get back on like sketching i would we would love to get your sketches every day on twitter i think not just about kinship anything that you would like to draw will <laughs> be just like uh, looking at yourself every day and get inspired oh yeah i want to do more i want to do more uh, i mm -hmm. got an ipad now that i can just sketch in bed which is pretty much the, the only time that i have time now um so i'll be posting more for sure but everything will be kind of focused on kinship. I want to, there's so many characters to design. There's so many things that I need to, to get visuals for. And yeah. you'll see a lot of more pieces coming for sure.